Hello friends, this is Dave Hurwitz, Executive Editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a new recording on this of some Scriabin stuff. You know, Scriabin is still actually on the margins, on the fringes of the repertoire. And, well, I mean, it's okay, he deserves to be. I mean, he's a little bit strange, but boy, when it's done right, it can be so powerful. And this is done right. It's, it's, let's see, what have we got here? We have the poem of ecstasy, le poème d'extase, and the fifth piano sonata, and Prometheus, le poème de feu, the poem of fire. I mean, Scriabin was nothing if not ambitious. Let's face it. And, and I mean, you know, the titles promise so much. Does the music deliver? Well, it can. It can. It doesn't always, but it can. And this is a wonderfully smart program. Really a brilliant program. First of all, you've got Yevgeny Sudbin piano in the fifth sonata and in Prometheus. And he's just a splendidly intelligent pianist, and he does a fabulous fifth sonata. Now, I adore the fifth sonata. You know, Scriabin's fifth piano sonata is right where you want to be in the universe of Scriabinosity. I mean, it's not as far out as his late stuff, but it's not as derivative as his early stuff. And it sounds, I've said before, it sounds kind of like Ravel on steroids. But then you look at the, at the date, 1907, and you realize it came before any of the Ravel stuff, steroids or not. I mean, Scriabin was a very forward-looking guy, musically. The poem of ecstasy was also the same year, 1907, and Prometheus was 1909 to 1910. So within that little three-year period, you have three remarkable pieces that never get the credit they deserve for being musically forward-thinking because Scriabin himself was such a nut and because his motivation was not specifically musical. I mean, he was a theosophist. He was trying to, you know, achieve nirvana and, you know, commune with the great beyond. And, and you know, and so all of that stuff is a distraction, frankly, from what he achieved musically. And it also... These pieces do not play themselves. They require really, really sympathetic interpretation, which they receive. I mean, uh, the fifth sonata, the fifth sonata submit is so, uh, the, the quick stuff has such filigree, such lightness. Usually, Vienna sort of clawed through it, you know, it's like becomes very heavy and, and unpleasant, but this is, this goes like the wind. And it's full of fantasy and, 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 and wonderful half tints and harmonic audacity. Oh my goodness, it's wonderful. And I have to say, the Singapore Symphony has really come of age. I mean, Lan Shui, who's the conductor and has been for like a billion years, just pulverizes the poem of ecstasy. My goodness, and I really like the way that the horribly annoying trumpet solo is well integrated into the texture. You know, it has that tune that comes back. And some performances, the guy just wails. It's da 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 Oh, God, it's annoying. But not here. Here it actually is beautifully balanced with the strings and everything else. And, you know, the, the sonics are unbelievably amazing. I mean, the big ending with the glockenspiel and the chimes and the stuff all going, it's really beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It's magnificently recorded because it's bis. I mean, it's going to blow your speakers out the back wall. And it's just fabulous. Also fabulous is the concept, the programming. Because you've got the Poem of Ecstasy, the big orchestral piece. And then you've got a sonata, which you need. I mean, frankly, you need to like, you know, dial down the, the, the thickness, you know, the orchestral overload. With it. So you've got a marvelous piano sonata that's only about 12 minutes long, 11 minutes and 6 seconds actually in this performance. And then you combine everybody. There's a big happy family. You've got the piano and the orchestra in Prometheus, which can so often sound like, you know, 20 minutes or 22 minutes and 17 seconds. 
of aimless noodling until you get to the end. You know, the piano goes, bloop, 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 and the orchestra is going, yeah, 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 yeah. And then finally, the wordless choir comes in, going, rah, 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 rah. Yeah, you know, it just, it's so silly. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. But here, you, you get it. You really get it because the language is the same. You know, from the poem of ecstasy, you get to the piano sonata, which has a very similar shape. You know, it has these sort of mysterious, dreamy things followed by more more energetic, motoric passages that are harmonically quite similar. And then in Prometheus, you put it all together. It's like having the poem of ecstasy, the piano sonata played simultaneously with a choir. And so it's just a fantastic sort of exegesis of Scriabin's mature style, while at the same time making a fabulous program that lasts 56 minutes and eight seconds in pellucidly fabulous sonics. So what's not to love? Get your Scriabin dose. I was so impressed by this and I had, I had no real expectations because most performances of the poem of ecstasy and Prometheus just bore me. I mean, just, they just don't go anywhere, but these really do. And with Sudbin and the piano, you're guaranteed an intriguing pianistic experience. So yeah, first rate stuff, a genuine surprise and a very happy one. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.